So by the end of 2012, I was uh, finishing a mission uh, research with the UN Women Program of Equality. And I just wrote a big, uh, I've written a big report of 120 pages about the image of powerful women in the Arab media. I was finishing a mission of consultant, uh, communication consultant with a very big industrial group in Tunisia and the mission has, uh, had lasted like two years. And in October 2012, I was just exhausted finishing those two missions and I had decided not to do anything for at least six months. Uh, I, I'm a teacher, I, I thought I would just be a teacher teaching two days a week and taking rest. And a month later, I found a coconut. So I didn't, uh, it was uh, really uh, something that happened by chance. Uh, I was thinking about trying to, to do my own pet supplies because I don't have only one dog, I have five of them. And if you can do the math, having five dogs means really spending lots of money on buying them beds, especially if they are ripping them out every time. So I wasn't really into any business thinking. I'm an intellectual, I'm a researcher. This isn't my area. It's nothing I, I ever imagined doing. And uh, it started actually with a dare on Facebook because I posted a, a photo of my dog with a ripped uh, sweater. And I was complaining that what we can find in Tunisia is only Chinese products, very bad quality and very expensive. And a friend, a friend of mine who was fed up, but really fed up with uh, all the pictures of the dogs I was posting all day, told me, okay, we are fed up with your dogs and stop complaining about the sweater. If you don't like it, why don't you manufacture your own? And I said, okay, I will. So I called a cousin of mine and I went to buy some fabrics and it was the very first time I went to, to the souks and I didn't even know where, where to buy fabrics. So I bought some jeans and I went to some friend uh, gave me the address of the manufacturer. I went to the manufacturer. I just do uh, a model of a bed and we did it. Um, I just posted the photos on Facebook. I did four of them and they were sold in like half an hour. Okay, so I wasn't the only one looking for uh, local pet supplies. So this is how it started actually. And I started buying fabrics and doing beds and designing them and it was fun. It was really fun. After a while I realized I needed a brand because everyone was like, what is it that you do? And does it have a name? And, okay. And this is how I decided it will be named after Kokola, uh, who is my abandoned dog, because I found her by chance, and uh, the, the brand came by chance, and I thought it will match uh, the story. So this is why my brand is named Kokola. Actually, her name is Chocola, it's chocolate, and uh, Kokola is her little name, by, by which we call her. So Kokola was growing, uh, very slowly. I was uh, working with four manufacturers. Um, it was messy, actually. I'm not a businesswoman. I'm a real intellectual. I don't even know how to calculate uh, the product's cost. I didn't know anything. So I was trying to find a way to make it work and to, to find markets and to, to advertise for it. Uh, and I met this very small manufacturer in a popular neighborhood. Uh, at the time, I was really desperate because big manufacturers were just driving me crazy. I started work with her because I needed her for a specific models that they couldn't do in big manufacturers because it, it, it takes too much time to do, which is my uh, bone-shaped bed, which is it's very, very big one. Okay, you will see it. <coughs> so, I started working with this woman and Progressively, I, was stopping, st I stopped working with big manufacturers. And one day, I, I was sitting there getting my, my products, and the guy came into her manufacturer and uh, proposed to her uh, uh, an order. He, was, he needed a thousand of bags. 
And she turned him down. She told him to go to another manufacturer. So I was shocked. Ca how can someone in need, because I knew she was in need, refuse to take such an order? And she told me because she didn't have uh, any machines. She only had two of them. And she couldn't afford to pay someone to help her. I was thinking about it at night. It felt so unfair. So I, I came up the next morning and I had this idea. What if I buy you a machine and if I pay someone for you, I pay a worker, it will still be your, your manufacturer. I'm not your partner, but it, just, it will help. And maybe it will help me lower the cost of my products. And this is what we did. I bought her a new machine and we recruited a woman and uh, she started getting big orders. Well, she's not uh, really, she didn't became that, uh, uh, become that big, but things are really getting better. And this woman led me to uh, meet other women from the same neighborhood. And one of these women was doing wool sweaters, but because of the crisis, no one was buying and ordering any wool sweater. Everyone was buying them, uh, you know, at the frippery, etc. So I met this other woman and another one, and they started doing uh, wool sweaters for dogs, and uh, they gave them an income. It was, it felt good because I, these are people I would never meet in, uh, in another context, at the university or at the UN uh, consulting thing or at the big industrial groups. I was meeting real people and having, um, and helping them and seeing really the impact. What happened next is that it was all natural for me. It was just something new but natural. I liked it. I was selected to a leadership program in the United States and I went there. I was selected as a UN researcher on uh, image of women. So I was in the United States for five weeks and I was introducing myself saying, hi, I'm a university teacher, I'm a communication consultant, I'm a consultant for the UN Women, and I have a small pet supply, first rate pet supplies business that is employing uh, only women from, um, from low, low income and from corporate neighborhood. And I didn't know I was a social entrepreneur <laughs> until everyone in the United States was like, oh, so you are the pet supply, uh, a lady, hi, and everyone was only remembering me, not by my 10 year uh, uh, old research career, not by my very famous report of 320 pages, I worked a year on it, not by anything I did since then, only by the pet supply thing. And powerful people and important people were asking me to come to at their table and to meet me, and they only wanted to hear about the pet supply thing. And this is when I realized I wasn't doing something that uh, normal. It was something important, and I didn't know it. I wasn't even, it is even not on my resume that I have a small business. So it, when I thought when you are far from home for a very long time, this is the time where you focus on your life, and you really uh, wonder what you want to do with your life. I came back, and we tried uh, to with the, the woman, the manufacturer, to enlarge that. And we are starting <coughs> to encourage young girls working with us to save money, to buy machines, and to become independent. And maybe I will become their client, because what I like in this relationship, I am not their boss. I am their client, they are independent. And back in 2012, I loved my life. It was perfect. I was earning good money. I was making so much, much traveling. Uh, now I can't travel because I can't uh, stay uh, away from my business. I don't earn that much money. Uh, UN pays uh, better than pet supplies. But I think I found my path. And this path isn't really about a business. Or it's about helping people find their own path and um, become better and go for them, like I did, go just out from your comfort zone. Don't say my life, it's good, I wanna keep it that way because you never know what is out of your comfort zone. Maybe the, your entire life and your real change is just a step toward. So this is my story.